My greatest asset, to be honest, is that I'm a woman. I mean, you know, many women that come from our part think that it's a disadvantage. I've always thought that being a woman is my greatest asset. I mean, I really can get away with doing a lot of things in Pakistan, um, getting into places and getting out because I'm a woman. What happens when you hire a feminist activist to direct a legendary cinema franchise? Backlash. Huge backlash happens. Apparently Disney, that owns Star Wars rights, decided that Charmaine Obichinoy, who is also a documentary filmmaker, is the best possible person to direct a new Star Wars movie. And why? Because she's a woman. And she's a person of color. Two very important things on your resume in 2024. Last year, Star Wars fans were let down again, especially by the not so great Mandalorian season three and the disappointing Ahsoka series. As soon as 2024 started, Lucasfilm quickly showed things might get even tougher for fans with the new Rey movie. They're bringing back Daisy Ridley as Rey, which not a lot of fans are excited about. And like I already mentioned, they've chosen Charmaine Obichinoy to direct. To be fair, she did win two Academy Awards in the past. To be even more fair, those were for documentaries. Before we speak more about this fiasco, please take a second and subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications to never miss another Daily Fredo episode. I also have a Patreon account now, so if you feel like supporting my channel and want even more content, you can find the link in my profile. Either way, thanks so much for being here and watching my videos. And now back to the topic. Even though Charmaine Obichinoy doesn't have much experience with big films, Lucasfilm and some new folks are making a big deal about her being the first woman and person of color to direct a Star Wars movie. And what happens when die-hard movie fans get pissed off? They start digging. And this is a video from 2015 that resurfaced that everyone is currently raging about. What is the balance of activating a force for change, but also trying to permeate that patriarchy, that power structure. And is that a part of the calculation of your art as well? And, and what's been the reaction to that? Oh, absolutely. I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> Not you, just, just, not, you not, know, you, not, not you. Point not taken, you. point taken. <laughs> you know, it is important to be able to look into the eyes of a man and say, I am here and recognize that and recognize that I am working to bring something that makes you uncomfortable and it should make you uncomfortable because you need to change your attitude. And it's only when you're uncomfortable, when you're shifty, when you have to have difficult conversations that you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like the reflection and then say, maybe there is something wrong with the way I think or maybe there is something wrong with the way I am addressing this issue. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> First, I want to give it some context because Chinoy is not talking about Star Wars here. It's an old interview from the time when she directed, I think, A Girl in the River. A documentary about a woman in Pakistan sentenced to death for falling in love becomes a rare survivor of the country's harsh judicial system. The movie meant to showcase women's real oppression. Not the Americanized version we hear feminists raging about today, listing their first world problems. So she says she likes to make men uncomfortable. Well, I think this film would make anyone uncomfortable because it's not a light topic, it's not a light watch. And yes, men should know about these things happening in the world. These horrors should be exposed. Unfortunately, fourth wave feminism distorted what the movement is supposed to be about. And men, not only men, people became desensitized again. To women's issues because of overcorrection. Feminism instead of fight for equality became a men-hating movement and that's why the words I like to make men uncomfortable pissed so many people off. She could have said I wanted men to pay attention, I wanted to show men something important, I wanted men to join in the movement against violence on women, anything. But she said she did it to make men uncomfortable. Not to educate them, not to join forces with them in a very real and important cause, to make them uncomfortable, again. And that's the difference between real feminism and toxic one, okay? Let's just imagine for a second if it was a man that says it. I enjoy making women uncomfortable. I want my movie to make women uncomfortable so they look in the mirror and they don't like what they see. Wouldn't lie. Someone said, the fucking irony in what she's saying, 
She will never try and put herself in an uncomfortable situation to try and challenge her worldview. She will continue to surround herself with like-minded people to keep her echo chamber secure. I work for a power company. Recently, we had 400,000 outages from a big storm and line workers from all over came to my state to help restore power. Not one of the line people out working in the chaos was a female. I say next time we need line men to restore a massive outage, they should all pull up their hands and say, we will let the women handle this one. And another one, to whom it may concern, I will not ever go to a feature film of any kind directed by a woke activist. Here is what Chinoy said. You know, I'm very thrilled about the project because I think um, what we are about to create is something very special. And we're in 2024 now. And I think uh, it's about time that we had a woman uh, come forward uh, to shape the story in a galaxy far, far away. No. There is absolutely no problem in letting a talented, experienced female film director to take the rails of the iconic franchise. But there is a problem in putting activists behind a wheel and hope that this time it will work. History shows it will not. Maybe Disney is just trying to break a record of money loss. Because every movie they've released this year, actually last year, 2023, flopped. Why aren't they learning? And really, why does every activist come into some minimal amount of power thinks she's a trailblazer? It's about time we got a woman to come forward to do this. Really? Was it? Was it been 12 freaking years since Kathleen Kennedy's been in charge of Lucasfilm? There is a bunch of women in all the leadership positions at Lucasfilm, okay? There is women in the story group, and we've had women directors, including for the entire Obi-Wan series, which was a nightmare. But no, please celebrate this. Someone asked this very important question on X under one of the posts defending Chinoy. I agree with you when you say she saw lots of things and should enjoy her space to tell her message to the world. She earned it, she fought for it, she survived slim odds to do what she does. But is the Star Wars franchise the best place for this? I guess that's the question. And the answers went deep. 100% it is. Let's shake up all those complacent fanboys a little. At first I thought, no, probably not the best place. Then I thought, but why should any media be exempt from showing the horrors women endure around the world by the hands of men under the control of men? All men should be uncomfortable at what other men inflict upon women. So then this user answered that last comment, not holding back. No, I've heard male bashing since I was a boy. Too many years of feeling guilt for being as I was. This is what fuels a lot of the trans phenomenon. Men propagandize to believe being a man makes you evil, rather than your choices, with no indicating of how to be a good man. That escalated quickly. See, that's what I mean. When a beloved movie franchise is suddenly used to evoke some sort of political message to serve a political agenda, no matter how noble, even if the intentions are good, it's just not going to work. It's not entertainment anymore. You feel like you're supposed to be brainwashed, like you are a pawn in someone's game. And that's what the audience doesn't like, especially when it's so obvious, like in the case of every movie Disney ever made. Maybe not ever, last few years. Because what did Chinoy do in terms of making actual big budget movies? Nothing. She's directed a couple of episodes of Miss Marvel, which ended up being so bad that had to be reshot. <laughs> Not by her, of course. That's it. That's what we are riding on. The worst performing series on Disney Plus for Marvel. And now she's going to direct the Ray movie, World of Real Road. Over at Star Wars News Net, Rob Leonardo had this to say about Obeid Chinoy's comments. This is a disappointing statement from Charmaine. If her focus is that she is a woman directing a Star Wars film, her focus is in the wrong place. If she was attempting to get the fans excited, she likely has done the opposite. This endless quest for virtue signaling has to end. Make a good film, Shermin. Blow the audience away. Bring Star Wars back to the center of the entertainment. With a movie so engaging, exciting and well-made, it will leave audiences and critics cheering. Do that and you can talk about being a woman all you want and people will cheer. Until then, please stop sounding like you are working in Disney's PR department with a focus on diversity and equity. Okay? Just make a good movie. When is the last time we had one come out of Disney Studios? It seems like the priorities there are not in the right place. Make a good movie. You would think a person who feels honored 
to take over a story of Star Wars would express her gratitude, respect for George Lucas, for the fans. She could speak how she loves the franchise and wants to do its justice and she wants to bring something to the audience that they will love. Make history because the movie will be so good. No, it's legendary because she's a woman and finally a woman gets to do something. <laughs> But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Did Disney make the right decision hiring Shermino Bicinoi to direct the new Star Wars? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to like and share it so the algorithm will bring you right back here. And of course, subscribe to my channel, turn on the notifications to never miss another Daily Fredo episode. That's all for today. Have a good one. My greatest asset, to be honest, is that I'm a woman. I've always thought that being a woman is my greatest asset.